In this video, we'll look at orthogonal diagonalization. The problem is to find a matrix Q that orthogonally diagonalizes A, given the eigenvalues of A. What we need to do is find an orthonormal basis for each eigenspace. Let's start with the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 6. We'll be solving the system a minus 6i, and that's a homogeneous system. So to set up that matrix, we're going to be subtracting 6 from the diagonal entries, which means our coefficient matrix is just a matrix of all 1s, and we've got zeros on the right side. So let's put this into our REF. If we take row 2 minus row 1, and also row 3 minus row 1, then we've got two rows of zeros at the bottom of the matrix. So at this point, our matrix is in our REF, and we can think about solving the system. Well, what we're finding are eigenvectors. Usually we call those x. So we could call our variables x1, x2, x3. And we've got a single leading one in this matrix here, meaning both of these two variables, x2 and x3, are going to take on parameters. So let's say x2 is equal to s and x3 is equal to t. The top row tells us that x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. So if we bring these two terms over to the other side, we'll have a sign change. And if we use the fact that x2 is s and x3 is t, then x1 is equal to minus s minus t. And so we can write up our solution in vector form. x1 is equal to minus s minus t, x2 is s, and x3 is t. So at this point we can write down a basis for the eigenspace E6 just by grabbing these coefficient vectors here, negative 1, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0, 1. But if we look back to the beginning of the problem, remember that what we we're trying to do is find an orthonormal basis for each eigenspace. So what we need to do now is perform the Gram-Schmidt process on this set of vectors here. And that way we'll produce an orthonormal set, an orthonormal basis for this eigenspace. So let's start our Gram-Schmidt process. We grab the first vector, call that v1, and that just gets added directly to our set. This set x that we're building um, is what I usually call a partial basis. So after each step, the set x will be updated and we'll be building up an orthogonal basis, eventually an orthonormal basis for this eigenspace. I've kept the original problem written up over here in case we want to refer back to that later, and let's continue with our Gram-Schmidt process. So at this point, we've done the first step. Um, we now need to grab the second vector in our set, and we need to subtract off its projection onto x. So let's say v2 is going to be the vector negative 1, 0, 1, minus the projection onto the set x of itself. So in looking at this projection onto x, we'll be calculating the dot product of this vector here with our basis vector. So dot product of these two vectors here is 1, and everything else we're going to write down will be about this basis vector x here. So we'll divide by the dot product of this vector with itself, which is 2, and that's going to be in the direction of that basis vector, negative 1, 1, 0. Now remember, when we're doing Gram-Schmidt, we're really concerned about the direction of the vector, meaning we're free to scale this vector if that will clear any fractions. So let's instead look at 2v2. We'll multiply that first vector through by 2, and then we'll subtract off. Really, now it's going to be 1 times 
this vector over here. We've just cleared the denominator. So 2v2 is going to equal negative 1, negative 1, 2. At this point, we can update our set x. It now consists of negative 1, 1, 0, as well as negative 1, negative 1, 2. And if we've done everything correctly, this should be an orthogonal set. So let's just check. Yep, dot product of these two vectors here is 0. Now at this point, we've used the Gram-Schmidt process to build an orthogonal basis for the eigenspace E6, but what we really need is an orthonormal basis. We need to take each vector in this set here, divide through by its length. So looking at the first vector, its length is root 2. So we'll just divide our components there through by root 2. Looking at the second vector, its length is root 6. So we'll divide through by root 6. So we've now got a set <clears throat> in which our two vectors are orthogonal to one another, and each vector has length 1. So we're now done with the eigenspace E6, and we can move on to the eigenspace E9. Let's solve the system A minus 9i, and that's a homogeneous system. So looking back at our original matrix A, we're going to subtract 9 from the diagonal entries, and the other entries will stay the same. And we're going to put this matrix into our REF. Let's swap the top two rows to get a 1 in the upper left. Then we can take row 2 plus 2 times our pivot row and row 3 minus our pivot row. Next, we'll move down into the right. This negative 3 will be our new pivot. So let's take row 2 divided by negative 3. So we can now use our pivot here to clean up the rest of that second column. Let's do row 1 plus 2 row 2 and row 3 minus 3 times row 2. So that'll give us 1, 0 and negative 1. And at this point we've got our matrix into our REF. So again we're finding eigenvectors uh, for this matrix. So usually we call our eigenvectors x, so why don't we call our variables x1, x2, x3. We've got leading ones in the first and second row, and that leaves a single column here without a leading one. So x3 is going to take on a parameter value. Uh, the top row says that x1 minus x3 is equal to 0, meaning x1 is equal to x3, so x1 is equal to t. Doing the same thing for the middle row. x2 minus x3 is equal to 0. So x2 is equal to x3, meaning x2 is equal to t. So if we write up our vector in vector form, it looks like 1, 1, 1 times t. And a basis for this eigenspace E9 will be the single vector 1, 1, 1. Now remember that we're trying to orthogonally diagonalize A, meaning we need an orthonormal basis for each eigenspace. Now in this case, we're lucky that our eigenspace only contains a single vector. So all we really need to do is normalize this vector, meaning divide it through by its own length so that it's got length 1. Length of this vector over here is root 3. So an orth orthonormal basis will be 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3. 
So we've now done a hard, the hard work for the problem. We've um, found an orthonormal basis for our two eigenspaces. And now we'll put this information together, the matrix Q that's going to orthogonally diagonalize our matrix just consists of all these vectors thrown together. So let's write down the eigenvectors for E6 first. Now there are some other possible answers. First of all, you may have written your columns in a different order. That would be fine. Um, secondly, if you look at these first two columns here, you may have a slightly different answer here um, because you may have chosen the vector v1 slightly differently when you were doing the Gram-Schmidt process at the beginning of the problem. Here we have a matrix Q that orthogonally diagonalizes the original matrix A.